Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HGTV Test here. In this video, I'm going to give you my opinion on the best TVs I've seen at CES 2019 and also tie up some loose ends on the things I forgot to mention in my previous videos. So my top choice of the best TVs I've seen at CES 2019 is definitely the LG Signature Series Rollable OLED or R Series or R9 Series. Now, the screen just looks so futuristic. Basically, the OLED panel can be rolled up and be hidden inside a sound box so that it doesn't actually disturb your view. Now, some of you may say that it is gimmicky, but this is not a product that is going to be targeted towards us normal consumers anyway. It is a class of products that will be targeted towards those for whom money is really no object. They probably stay in, let's say, an open plan apartment overlooking the beach or something, and the price will be correspondingly stratospheric as well. This is a class of products that is really right up there with the likes of Aston Martin, Patek Philippe, that is truly aspirational, truly defines a luxury. And I think some of you have guessed the price that it is going to be five figures, but you are probably not sure how much into the five figure territory we are talking about. So let me just say that it will be very close to the price of a Sony BVM X300 broadcast monitor. That is really the price that we are talking about. Obviously, mere mortals like us can never afford it, but again, this product it's a statement product, it's not really meant for us anyway, it's meant for those who truly want a futuristic aspirational television to really grace their you know, million pound mansion or whatever. So that is from the point of view of the rollable OLED, it will have all the goodness on LG's 2019 OLED including full bandwidth HDMI 2.1, smooth gradation feature, calibratable SDR game mode, customizable HDR tone curves, which LG has implemented in partnership with portrait displays. And from the OLED panel side of things, all 2019 WRGB OLED panels from LG display is still going to be bottom emission. And this will be the case going into 2020 as well, even for the 8K sets. Now, let's talk about the second screen that impressed me at CS 2019, and that is going to be Panasonic's GZ2000 OLED TV. Now, we've always been a big fan of Panasonic's color accuracy. I think their internal 3D LUT is just so insanely accurate, and that probably helped it win our 2018 TV shootout event. But new for 2019, what the Japanese brand has done is to add Dolby Vision support on top of HDR10, HLG, and also the open standard HDR10 Plus dynamic metadata formats, making the Panasonic GZ2000 the first truly HDR agnostic television out there that supports all the major HDR formats when it is actually released. Now, one criticism of it is that it doesn't have the full HDMI 2.1 features. It only supports ARM or auto low latency mode. Now, with regards to HDMI 2.1, I think the thing to be clear is that some of you have been asking whether your 2018 set can be updated via firmware to support various HDMI 2.1 features such as a variable refresh rate or VRR or enhanced ARC or ARRC or let's say auto low latency mode. Now the thing is these capabilities would have to be present on the chipset itself or the SOC when these TVs let's say your 2018 sets were in the developmental phase probably in late 2017. So unless there is a specific announcement on news that these features will be supported on your set. It is extremely unlikely that these TVs can be firmware updated to support variable refresh rate or enhanced ARC or ALM features. Let's say 2018 OLED TVs, the reason why they can't really support VRR is because the T-Con and the panel that is supplied by LG Display doesn't really support VRR or variable refresh rate, which is why you can't see VRR being supported on any of the 2018 OLED TVs. But this has changed for 2019, and 
Again, why is LG able to support VRR but not Panasonic? This is down to the SoC that was used. So it depends on the capability of the SoC that was used, whether the SoC was developed in-house or they are sourced from third parties such as MediaTek or Realtek. Again, it's up to the choice of the TV brand. So it's not a simple case of if you want this feature, just software update it. No, it depends on the hardware limitation of the SOC itself. And at the CES 2019, what we have seen is that LG has really taken the lead in terms of HDMI 2.1 features supported and also the bandwidth supported even on their 4K OLEDs. So that is from the HDMI 2.1 point of view. And one of the other screens that I really like at CS 2019, it was one of my highlights as well, is the Sony Z9G. And the reason I like it so much is not only because of the 8K resolution, it has 7680 times 4320 pixels, and Sony's detail retrieval from its upscaling process is phenomenal from the X1 Ultimate chipset. But more importantly, I saw a peak brightness that was really quite impactful in terms of the HDR delivery. And I haven't seen such impactful HDR since maybe Sony's 10,000 nit HDR 8K prototype back in CES 2018. And if I had to guess, the peak brightness is probably sitting between 2,500 to 3,500 nits from the 85-inch ZG9 or Z9G that I demoed, it looked extremely impressive in terms of the sheer impact and the sparkle of the specular highlights. And although I like the deep blacks that OLED can deliver, I'm also a very, very big fan of high peak brightness for that sheer raw HDR impact. And certainly the Sony ZG9 or Z9G delivered in spades. Now, I want to point out some sort of confusion that may have cropped up from one of my earlier videos where I said that Sony's documentation said that HDR10 Plus will also be playable on the Sony ZG9 or Z9G. And after further clarification with Sony, what they actually meant is that they are not actually supporting HDR10 Plus per se. But what they are saying is that because HDR10 Plus is backwards compatible, drastically, HDR10 Plus is just HDR10 with additional dynamic metadata on top. So when you feed a HDR10 Plus signal to the Sony ZG9 or Z9G, what it will do is that it will read the HDR10 portion, static metadata portion, but apply Sony's own picture processing to deliver a picture quality that is equivalent to HDR10 Plus to match the creator's intent. So that was what Sony meant in its documentation when it wrote that HDR10 Plus will also be playable. So my sincerest apologies for any confusion caused on my part. This does not mean that Sony will be supporting the HDR10 Plus format. It just means that in their opinion, their video processing can deliver a picture quality that is similar to HDR10+, Plus, even though it can only read the HDR10 portion. And one other TV that I missed out on covering in my previous videos from Sony is the Bravia XG95 or X950G series. Now, this doesn't have backlight master drive, this doesn't come under the master series umbrella, but it will have the X1 Ultimate chipset. And there are four screen sizes as far as I'm aware, 55 inch, 65 inch, 75 inch, and the 85 inch. And the larger 75 inch and 85 inch models will be using the XY angle technology, whereas the 55 inch and 65 inch versions won't have XY angle. Now, if you have seen my review of the Sony ZF9 or Z9F or maybe read some other publications, you may have been aware that XY angle, even though it does widen the viewing angle and reduce the loss of contrast and saturation of axis, it also caused some reduction in the contrast performance and made the blacks shallower, made blooming a bit more visible. And when we demoed the 75 inch of the XG95 or X950G in a side by side comparison with a 75 inch Q9FN at a Sony briefing, what we found was that the 
black bars and blooming control looked better than the Z9F or ZF9 and from speaking to Sony engineers they have taken aboard our feedback and feedback from other reviewers and improved the local dimming algorithm on the X950G to keep the top and bottom letterbox bars blacker and also to keep blooming under control so we really do look forward to reviewing the XG95 when it hits the street so that's from the Sony front and now we come to talk about Samsung. Samsung didn't really use CES 2019 to launch or announce any of their 2019 TV lineup. Instead, it is more of a technological showcase for micro LED technology. Now I know some of you are extremely excited about micro LED technology, but I think you have to be realistic as to when this display technology can reach consumers' homes. And as far as I'm concerned, there are three main barriers that will prevent it from being available to normal consumers like you and me anytime soon. The first of it is price, and this is still really a technology that is three to five years away. We don't really know at what price point it will actually come in. Second is resolution. At this moment in time, Samsung has only managed to fit enough LEDs into a 75-inch screen to deliver 4K resolution. And the irony is that Samsung themselves are the first company that tried to really push 8K. And when you consider that many other TV brands are now launching, releasing, announcing 8K screens, I think to charge a premium price for a 4K screen is just not going to be enough to cut it. So they really need to find some way to make a 8K micro LED to align with the overall marketing strategy of the company. Also, one thing that many of you may not be aware of is that with the Micro LED technology, even though its modularity is a great strength, it will also cause some visible seams when you actually stack all these tiles together. Now, Samsung has been very careful at CS 2019 and in fact any other show where they showed off micro LED technology to keep viewers at bay at a certain viewing distance away by placing barriers around the screen so that no one can really walk up close to the screen to see these visible seams. However, at CS 2019, I saw this corner where the company is showing off the individual tiles and I took a quick video to show the visible seams. I don't know whether you can actually see it from this YouTube video because of the compression and also because of the focusing of the smartphone camera I'm using to capture this footage but you can see these visible seams which again at normal viewing distance maybe it may not be visible but off axis maybe in dark scenes I think it was quite clear to me and also it raises the question of how easy it is to match the calibration from one tile to another in terms of the calorimetry so there are three main barriers to micro LED technology becoming prevalent in consumer homes and I think those are price, resolution and also these visible seams and again I think you have to be realistic. I like the concept of the technology, high peak brightness without risk of burn-in, wide viewing angles, safe emissive, full color volume but realistically maybe we're talking at least three to five years away before this can even you know come close to a consumer home so that is from the micro led side of things but samsung did demonstrate their flagship 2019 uhd qled television in a backroom event and i sketched out an illustration detailing the improvements that we were seeing on the set now one lingering question is HDMI 2.1, whether these TVs will have the full bandwidth HDMI 2.1 of 48 gigabits per second. Now, from speaking to people in the back room, they said that unofficially, I think the plan is to eventually provide at least one HDMI 2.1 port on these televisions, either at launch or through a complementary one connect box upgrade 
but they are still awaiting certification, which is why there is no official announcement from Samsung on this front. I'll tell you what I actually regretted missing is the Hisense ULED XD series. Now, the thing is, I was actually in Las Vegas for a very short period. I flew in on Saturday and then flew back on Wednesday, so I was actually in and out very quickly. The story of my life, really. And I didn't really have enough time to cover everything that I really wanted to cover. So if I had one extra day at the show, then maybe I would have visited Hisense booth and had a look at this ULED XD series. The concept is quite interesting. So basically what they are doing is to use two LCD panel, dual stack them, and then use the second stack layer to control the backlight that is being output to the first layer. I think this technology came from Panasonic and some ISO monitor and I think even Sony's X310 reference broadcast LCD monitor is using this technology which in theory will allow for high peak brightness will have no risk of burning unlike the X300 RGB OLED and also because of this second stack layer they can control the backlight making it as if this TV uses an emissive technology to create deeper blacks and also higher contrast. So it would have been interesting to visit Hisense Bull, but unfortunately, I just didn't have time. So that's a wrap on CS 2019. This is my final video related to CS 2019. Before this video, I've put out, I think, 14 videos for CS 2019 and each video has gotten at least 10,000 views, at least 500 likes and the most popular video has surpassed 70,000 views. So I really appreciate all of you watching, sharing, commenting on these videos. Now putting out all these videos is a lot of work and basically I'm doing it all myself. I'm the director, I'm the DP, I'm the sound guy. I'm the talent on screen who is speaking somewhat coherently, hopefully. And I'm the editor, I'm the colorist, I'm the sound effects guy. And I hope you appreciate the effort that has gone into these videos to give you really, truly valuable content. And on that note, I'm going to end this video. I really appreciate you watching and supporting this channel. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HGTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.